Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah. I thought I'm going to skip this keynote, but they didn't allow me to that, do that. So I have to talk about MRV. So we're here in Barcelona, so great city and a great conference. Whoa. And uh, it's, it's kind of scary letters. <laughs> and, uh, but we have uh, heroes to conquer this scarcity. So like this guy. And then the name of this guy is written like this in Japanese, Matsumoto Yukihiro. And in Chinese character, kanji characters, goes like this. The, this character means pine tree. This is the book or origin. This is going. And this is being wisely. So from the origin, uh, from the root of the pine tree, go the summon go wise, uh, wisely. Kind of sounds like stupid. Anyway, <laughs> in in the alphabet, my names go like this: Yukihiro Matsumoto. And uh, maybe you don't remember my name, so this is clue: Yukihiro Matsumoto. <laughs> But don't worry, you don't have to remember. Just call me Matt. <laughs> and uh, so the, we have the, the implementation of the Ruby language named MRI, often called MRI, which stands for Matt's Ruby Interpreter. But uh, I don't think it's a proper term. So when I uh, published the first version of Ruby programming language in 95. Whoa, that's old, 19 years ago. So uh, it, the whole interpreter was written by me, myself. But after the, those years, much smarter programmers joined to our, our contributors. So since uh, one nine, we have new virtual machines, much faster than the original one. And, uh, we replaced uh, many of the uh, core libraries. We recently replaced the garbage collectors. So the recent Ruby, especially Ruby 2.1, 2.2, a uh, uh, brand new Ruby. Actually, I'm not working on Ruby itself for, long, uh, re for those years. So I'm, I'm no longer a, the, the core developer of the MRI. So let's call it C Ruby, just because now the Ruby a programming language mainly implemented in, uh, in C programming language. So the C Ruby is the Ruby. So when you think of the uh, language and the implementation, probably many of you, instead of the, uh, some JRuby guys or the Brian here, <laughs> uh, think of the, the C Ruby, but we have some different implementation of Ruby we, that I call Auto Ruby. That stands for the Alternative Ruby Implementations. So, 15 years ago, about about 15 years ago, so at that time there was no alternative implementation of Ruby and no alternative implementation of Perl, and then. We had uh, old, uh, Python and uh, JPython back then, later renamed to Jython. So back then, many people claim Ruby implementation, Ruby syntax, is too complex to implement alternative implementation. So I agreed with that. Just because you know, the Ruby syntax is, appears to be simple, and they try to be natural. But in reality, it's quite complex. So it is too complex, and it is too implementation dependent. So 
I myself didn't believe that no, uh, that someone come up with the alternative implementation. But uh, 15 years later, today, we have uh, no alternative implementation of Pro programming language, except for Pro 6. And then uh, we have the Python, uh, and then uh, PyPy, and uh, several others. The, is, is JSON still alive now? Alive now? I don't know. But uh, in Ruby, we have, I don't know, I can't believe that, we have a bunch of alternative implementations, like JRuby on top of JVM, which is a great uh, platform for the programming languages, and the Rubinius on top of C++, and uh, they, the people behind the Rubinius is pretty you know, computer, computer science geeks, so they read through the, the science papers, so they pick up the ideas and put in the, the Rubinius. So the, the Rubinius itself is pretty great ideas, full of, full of great ideas. And the Ruby motions. Uh, Ruby motion is a LLVM, a head of time compiler of a Ruby programming language. So you can compile uh, the Ruby into native applications on iOS devices like apps. So, and uh, recently they, uh, they try to support Android as well. So that's great. So then uh, Ruby Motion is based on uh, Mac Ruby, which is on top of the OS X. And uh, I, we had, we have, I don't know, Net, uh, Iron Ruby, which is on top of .NET um, from Microsoft. And uh, the, we, we, I recently haven't heard about them much, but uh, we had Maglev, uh, which is uh, Ruby implementation on top of the Gemstone small talk virtual machines. And uh, it, it ran quite fast. And then uh, we, the, we have some newcomers, like Topaz, which on top of PyPy, uh, it's the jetting uh, language in virtual machine platform, uh, primarily the uh, target to Python, of course, from the name. You can tell from the name. And then uh, Topaz, is a Ruby implementation on top of PyPy. So Opal is the very newcomer which compiles Ruby program into the JavaScript. So you can run Ruby on top of your browser. Quite nice. And then this is the old one, Cardinal, which is, which is on top of Parrot. The Parrot is a virtual machine for the Per6 which is abandoned the, the, the way back. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it was experimental, but it was a quite nice try back then. So it is kind of easy to implement it, 80% of the Ruby programming language, but uh, it is quite difficult to fully, maybe 99% compatible Ruby. And uh, the, some people, like the people behind JRuby, people behind uh, Rubinius did that great task. I'm, I'm proud of them. So today I'm going to talk about a yet another alternative implementation named MRuby on top of C programming language. The background. Um, in the year of 2009, I talked with the engineers from the embedded systems field. So I want to make, I want to see Ruby everywhere. So we have dominated the web, almost. <laughs> and, uh, but not in other fields, like uh, research computing. In research computing, you know, Python is much stronger, and uh, we have R to compete, and uh, recently we see Zulia. And, uh, or even on supercomputing, so very few people uh, use Ruby in supercomputing. And then as on the smaller devices, the, the, for example, apps. So many people uh, use, say, Objective-C or Java or C or something else to, to develop apps on the uh, mobiles. Or, or even smaller computers like, uh, you know, the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. So you do uh, use the, the other languages than Ruby. 
So then the, we talked, discussed about the future of embedding programming uh, with uh, engineers from the embedding field. So they told me they, they are having the faster CPU on smaller computers, and uh, they have bigger memory. And uh, the ratio of the uh, software in the, their systems is getting bigger and bigger. So the software is getting more and more complex. So they need to develop more and more software and effectively with less time and less money, less people, and with smaller team. So they claimed we need a weapon to uh, be productive, effective, new tool and new way of development, new language. So the, we concluded we needed to, that the, the people to, uh, in, in the embedding field need, need to learn from web, agile way, or test-driven, and community-driven, and open source. So these movements are not really big in the embedding field, just because you know, not, it's not that their way. They wanted it to be stable. They want to be conservative, just because you, know, you cannot up, you, it is very, very difficult to upgrade the software and the systems and the hardware. So because of that, they want to be uh, move slowly and, and go the very stable way. But the things are changing. A lot of devices are on the net, connected to the net. So you can e now you can easily upgrade the software just like apps or just like webs. So we predict in 10 years from 2009, to, uh, 2009 so the way of the de uh, embedding development will be changed just like web. So I have done a small survey. So the, the CRB is not good for embedding system. It's just too big and it doesn't have good embedding API. So in, for CRuby's API design, is designed to be enhanced Ruby interpreter or virtual machine. So you can add a new uh, features, task, or you can link a, a, the new library to add features to the interpreter. So you can write uh, your application in Ruby. But the people in the embedding field want to implement their systems in C or C++, then enhance their systems with the more flexible language like Ruby. So the you know, architecture is upside down. So the C Ruby is not, good, not suitable for that purpose. No embedding API, too much POSIX. So the you know, C implementation of the C Ruby is rely on the POSIX. So the, the POSIX available on the POSIX, POSIX platform, like a Linux, um, Windows, part of, and uh, Mac, it doesn't care. But uh, em for embedded systems, most embedding platform are not POSIX aware. So the C Ruby is too much POSIX. So JRuby is not good as well. The J J uh, JVM does not have no embedding API, and it's huge. And uh, it's too much Java. <laughs> and uh, you have the micro edition for embedding system. Mic Java micro edition is, yeah, you can use Java micro edition for embedded system, but it's too small. I mean, the, uh, API wise. So micro edition is not really a ja the Java we imagine. So it's just, so you, I don't think we can run Jerry on top of the Java micro edition, which even doesn't have the proper garbage collector. So Rubinius is not that much good for, for embedded systems. It's, it's bigger. It's quite a you know, memory extension. So no embedding API, and it consumes much memory, and we need new one. So, but how can we manage? We, so 
I asked some, uh, some people about the, uh, the new idea, and uh, we got a grant from the Japanese government segment named METI, which means the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry of Japan. So for me, it's not about money, and uh, it's about motivation. So the, our team got grant for two-year project. So we got to finish it within in, in the two years. So that's my pr primary motivation. So since 90, uh, I mean the 2009 to 2011, we worked on the alternative implementation in MRV. So uh, yeah, we need to be responsible when we got money. So uh, we got MRV. Uh, MRV stands for Mats Motors, <laughs> Embeddable, Minimalistic, Modular, Ruby. Uh, Mats Motor means my family name, but uh, uh, you may know that Mats Motor is pretty popular, a common name, a common family name in Japan. Actually, we have three Mats Motors in top contributor of MRuby. <laughs> No, we are not relatives. <laughs> and embeddable. So we designed an embeddable API uh, just look after the Lua. So Lua is a, a programming language designed, uh, designed from, uh, came from Brazil. And uh, it's pretty good for embedding. So embedding in the devices, embedding in the applications, embedding in games. So, so I look. Uh, I designed the API after Lua API. And the minimalistic means uh, requires less resource and uh, focus latency than throughput. So to, to accomplish that, we designed the incremental generational garbage collector for MRuby. And the modular means that you can uh, separate the unneeded uh, component of the language when you uh, build MRuby in the systems. So compiler and the runtimes are modular, so you can drop, that, drop the things that you don't need. So like uh, classes and the parser and the code generators. And, and then MRuby itself is very configurable. So like uh, uh, MRuby use, you can define the compile time option to use float instead of double or the, you can embed the, uh, your value into the uh, floating point numbers by using the num technique named num boxing. Or the, you can use the uh, inst instant, uh, instance variable implementation uh, for a uh, segmented list for your implemented uh, instance variable implementation instead of the hash. And it runs on the various platform. It only requires say, uh, C99. So everywhere you can run C99, so you can run MRuby. It, it runs on Linux, OS 10, Windows, or on iOS, Android, or even on a bare metal, like, a, like on top of uh, Arduino, the bigger one. So it has very flexible architecture. You can execute your program from a file, or you can execute from uh, your Ruby program from a string. So you can uh, execute your uh, uh, program from the compiled binary file. Or you can, exp uh, you can load your compiled binary from your compiled C, uh, C embedded strings. So syntax-wise, MRV is 1.9 compatible, Ruby 1.9 compatible. So we don't have no keyword arguments in def. We have no, uh, we don't have a refinement. We don't have the complex, rational, big num numbers. And the, the biggest difference from CRuby and MRuby is like this. We are one divided by two beca be will become 0 0.5. Just because you know, the, if the integer overflows, it goes to the float instead of big num. So the, it, for MRuby, the float and uh, integers should be more compatible than 
uh, interoperable than CRuby. So you can grab the uh, source code of MRuby from GitHub. So to compile MRuby, it's quite easy, like a git, git clone, then uh, if you need it, so the build config file, then rake test. By uh, compiling via rake, you can get a static library and uh, MRuby as a uh, ex sample interpreter. So MIRB is the IRB for MRuby, so interactive MRuby. And the MRBC is a bytecode compiler, so you can compile uh, Ruby code into binary. Then the last one, MRB test, is uh, the test suite. So you can compile uh, all the test suite into, uh, into one single command. Then the MRB test is also an example of how to embed your Ruby programs into C. And, uh, very important aspect of uh, MRuby is MRBGEM, which is a counterpart of the RubyGEM. But uh, you know, the MRuby only requires C99, so we cannot load things dynamically. So, so MRB, it's a, everything in MRBGEM is compiled statically into the interpreter. Actually, library. Uh, so the MRB, MRB gem is kind of like a statically comp uh, linked gem. So to use MRB gem, so install the mgem gem. That's kind of confusing. So mgem is a, the tool to manage uh, MRB gem. Then mgem update to download the list of the MRB gems, so you can have the list of the MRB gem uploaded in, in the, uh, the onto the repository. So you can have the mgem. Currently, as of today, we have 129 MRB gems. That's kind of many. So it goes like this. Uh, list and the uh, tiny, small description of the MRBG. Of course, you are not supposed to be read this. So, for example, we have the MRuby I.O. So, the core MRuby does not have any I.O. Just because, you know, the, some bare metal systems does not have any file system, nor the standard I.O. or anything. So, the the whole I.O. is optional in MRuby. So you can uh, parse, parse and uh, output JSON. You can access the SQLite tree. You can uh, access message pack, Redis. And uh, you can access the uh, C function from Ruby using the libffi, which, where, which libffi is available. You can access FluentD, uh, LiveUV, which is the back end of the Node.js. You can access uh, those functions. Uh, you can control the V8, uh, the JavaScript compiler from MRuby. Uh, MRuby Synetics is a kind of clone of Sinatra in MRuby. Uh, you can control Arduino or Wiring Pi from MRuby or even the uh, Linux C groups. It's, and, uh, it's quite easy to make MRB jam. You can create the uh, uh, name of the directory of the name of the jam. Then MRB, the, create a file named the MRB jam.wake, which kind of like seems similar to gem, uh, Ruby gems. So name, license, author, the sum, small summary, and then you can add a dependency. Then, okay, you can put the, your C file, C++ file in the source directory of C. And then Ruby API is pretty simple, uh, something in between Ruby and Lua. So 
I don't think I have time to explain about the uh, detail of uh, MRB API, so maybe, maybe in the next, next year we, I'm going to have an MRB workshop or something. <laughs> anyway, so and, uh, you can compile the Ruby file into a library. So you when you use the uh, Ruby library, create a directory named MRB live, then create a, a Ruby file, put a Ruby, your Ruby program on it. You can create a test file in a test directory, so it is automatically test when it's linked. So check out the MRB uh, deal in, in the repo. So we, the, even in the core, we have a bunch of the MRB gem as a sample, and then you can access many things. So the, these uh, gems are optional, so you don't have, y you can drop off the things, and then that's quite easy to uh, handle. So you can put your MRB gem in GitHub, so use mgm config to generate the build config.rb, or add conf gem URL in, in your uh, build config.rb. Rake will automatically fetch and compile the gems so you don't have to worry about that. Or maybe you can use your own config file uh, by specifying the uh, environment variable before rake. So, so, we have MRuby right now. MRuby is small, MRuby is uh, fast enough. It's not fa that fast though, so, but uh, what can we use MRuby for? It's everything. You can use it everything. But remind that MRuby, the feature-wise, MRuby is smaller. Like a, we don't have some features in CRuby or JRuby, Rubinius. So it's, it, it doesn't have. The portability, portability is the primary motivation. So the, we cannot have the the things uh, which relies on the specific platform. Uh, for example, we cannot have, say, the, what? We cannot have the uh, operating system access. So, but uh, you can add it later using gems. So, anyway, you need a language. Like, a pro uh, yeah, you can add programmability to your systems. Anywhere you want Tickle or Lua, you can use MRuby. So API-wise, it's similar to Ruby, uh, Lua, but I think it's, it has better API and a better language. Yeah. No, no offending. <laughs> and uh, it's comparable performance for embedded systems, so especially for prototypes or customizable ones. For example, a company in Japan is experimenting prototype of vending machines. So the, some of you might visit Japan, and then you may notice that in Japan, the, we have vending machines all over the country. So, and there's some vending machines are very, very uh, intellectual. <laughs> we have some kind of a touch screen on it, and even a game on it. So some vending machine even has a face recognition, not to sell the barcodes to younger children. It's quite, it's quite complex systems. So they try to uh, implement, uh, include MRuby to make, it, make them easier to add new features. So they are right now experimenting on it or the microsatellite. So some friend of mine back in Japan created a very tiny computer that runs MRuby, this size. And then they put everything into the, the size of the beverage can, Coke can, and then they put them as a satellite. So the MRuby in the space. So this, uh, they called it CANSAT, canned satellite. 
So that can set is so small, so you can uh, lift a bunch of can set with the uh, piggyback into the, the real satellite. So it will cost them, I don't know, maybe $1,000 or tens of $10,000 or something. That's not expensive. So even the high school student can design and, uh, this can set. And uh, some people control robots using uh, MRV or home automation, like a Arduino, or maybe uh, Raspberry Pi. And then you can use MRV for extend, uh, extending, uh, enhancing applications. For example, the web, app, the web servers. So, so we have the, the Apache module named Mod MRV. So that, that enable to enhance a uh, control Apache using Ruby. So you can replace the mod rewrite, mod, uh, you can control routing, uh, resource uh, throttling using that the C, C group feature of the, uh, Linux, from the Linux. So you can uh, limit the, the bandwidth or CPU resource or memories or whatever to the certain uh, request from from the client. Or the same guy developed the Nginx MRV, so you can control the Nginx and, and the Apache using the uh, same script, same Ruby script. Or maybe in the future, not no one working on it yet, but uh, in the future, we can have an editor which can be uh, enhanced using uh, MRV instead of Emacs list or Vim script. Uh, some guys embedded uh, MRuby in the databases. Uh, av av no, Avocado, it, the NoSQL no database, it used to be called Avocado database. Uh, Al Aran Arango. Arango database embed MRuby in it. And then some people considering about embedding, uh, configuring games using MRuby. So the, some people already use Lua in the commercial games, and uh, the other guys are considering uh, embedding MRuby in game, uh, the consumer games. Or others, the, the Japanese uh, net company uh, ships the router that embeds MRuby. So they can write routing rules, and they, they are the, the CUI interface uh, using MRuby. So the, if you want to provide programmability uh, to your systems, you can use MRuby everywhere. So, so the, right now, so I, like I said, I, I no longer work as a programmer to develop C Ruby. So we have the much smarter guys like Koichi and Nobu and uh, maybe Zach and so many uh, Ruby contributors. So, so I don't have to work, uh, work as a programmer. So I work, uh, well, I work as a designer, lead designer of the language. At the same time, I'm a the born to be program. So I want to program. So as a programmer, I work on uh, MRuby. So this, it's quite fun. So, the, some people ask me that will MRuby replace C Ruby? That, that's a fair question. So the, the language designer himself working on the another implementation, so you may, you may suspect so the, the MRuby will replace C Ruby in some future. But the, the answer is no. So the, the, as I said, primary motivation behind MRuby is uh, the portability. So it has less functionality, and uh, it is uh, still 1.9 compatible, not, not 2.x compatible. So can MRuby be used in server-side, not in the, the devices, not in the, the client systems? So it's, it's yes. 
The answer is yes. It is less memory, so with generation incremental garbage collector. So, and then we already have uh, MRuby UV. So we can, I recommend, yeah, it's a, it's a ch still a challenge, but you can theoretically use the MRuby in server side. So can I involve in its development? The answer is, of course, yes. It's open source. So check out github.com mruby slash mruby. And uh, so you can do whatever you want, play with mruby. So if you have uh, new things, new interesting things, uh, just tell me. And uh, if you have improvement ideas, if you, have, you, if you find bugs, please submit uh, issues to the uh, GitHub. So I will, I will glad to see you involved. And uh, happy hacking, and thank you today. <laughs>